everybody, what is going on? This is Anthony with the VR Game Rankings YouTube channel, and this is the Weekend Recap. And what exactly is the Weekend Recap? Well, it's basically the daily vlog series, except it's not daily. It's once a week. It is on the weekend. And then the other thing I got to tell you is... I can't guarantee that you're going to get this next week. I can't guarantee that you're going to get it the week after that or anything like that because everything is by the seat of my pants, basically, you might say. And I'm able to do this this weekend. Will I be able to do it next weekend? I don't know. But it is a good idea. I probably should do this if and when possible. And so this is episode 137, I guess. It is Friday, April 20th, otherwise known as 420. I am in the state of California. It is a very green state. And I can tell you that if I go walk outside right now, there's a distinctive smell of pine in the air. I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but there seems to be a celebration going on. But anyway, guys, let's go ahead and get into the topics of the show. And story number one is Psychonauts in the Rhombus of Ruin has arrived for the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift. So as far as I knew, this game was not scheduled to arrive for the Rift or the Vive. It kind of just came out of nowhere. There was no pre-announcement for this. It just all of a sudden showed up, bam, out of the blue. It is currently available. You can pick this game up. Now, the normal standard price for this game is 20 bucks. It's $19.99, but there is an initial launch window discount. You can pick it up for $15.99. Not a bad deal. Now, of course, I've kind of been wondering, where is Nog? I remember Nog was supposed to be coming to Steam. I, did it ever come out? I don't even know. It's been so long, but I never heard that Psychonauts Rhombus of Ruin was coming to Steam or Oculus, but hey, it's a good thing, right? This game originally arrived on PlayStation VR back on September 21st, 2017, so it's been well over a year, but now it's available on Steam and Oculus, so you can go ahead and pick up this double fine adventure, uh, Psychonauts in the Rhombus of Ruin. Now, speaking of sale prices and stuff like that, Steam VR is having a spring VR sale. And there are a ton of great games that are on sale. In fact, way too many good deals for me to possibly list all of the great games that are on sale. However, what I did do, like I tend to do, is I will make my own little list of what I think are a bunch of games that you should probably take a really good look at. If you don't own these games, the prices they're going for and the quality of games they are, these are some good games to take a, a good look at. And so basically Pavlov VR is 40% off. You can pick up Pavlov for six bucks. The normal price on this is 10 bucks. Great deal. Vertigo. Vertigo is 80% off. You can grab this for a mere $3. It normally goes for 15 bucks. Dead Effect 2 VR. This game is 60% off. It normally goes for 25 bucks. You can grab it for 10 bucks. Not a bad deal at all. Audio Shield. This game very rarely goes on sale. You can grab this for a 10 spot. It is 50% off. It normally goes for 20 bucks. Let me go ahead and scroll down here a little bit. Okay, the Talus Principle VR is 50% off. It's 20 bucks. It normally goes for 40. I mean, this is definitely a triple A type of game and it has a tremendous amount of content. I personally believe that the Talos Principle VR, quite possibly the best puzzle game we have in VR period, bar none, and probably one of the 20 best VR games we have period as well. So to pick this baby up for 20 bucks, Pretty much a no-brainer. If you don't have it, I highly suggest grabbing it. The Brookhaven Experiment, I feel, is incredibly underrated. You know, I was ranting and raving about Time Carnage VR, a very good wave shooter. But, you know, maybe the best wave shooter still is the Brookhaven Experiment. And one of the best things about the Brookhaven Experiment, it is a 360-degree deal. you got zombies coming from the rear coming from above you know you'll be dropped into a scenario where there's eight or nine different entrances 
all around you in different spots and you constantly got to check your six a lot of creepy crawlies this game will really creep you out if you are if you get into certain games and you get freaked the hell out you probably want to stay away from the Brookhaven experiment, but I've been a huge fan of this game and you can grab it for eight bucks. The normal price is 20. That is a 60% discount. And then the last one I'll mention, Vanishing Realms, an oldie but a goodie, 35% off. Not a huge discount here, but you can grab it for 13 bucks. It normally goes for 20. And I really feel like Vanishing Realms one of the most solid VR games there are, and, and we tend to forget about it a little bit. So uh, one thing to know about this sale, it does expire this Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific, so you don't got a lot of time to think about it. If you want to grab any of these games or any of the other games that are on sale, bounce over to Steam, check it out, make it happen, because you really only have Saturday and Sunday, and you have a few hours early on Monday to make the deal happen. Otherwise, all of it will expire. Okay, so let's get into story number three. Story number three, Orbis VR is the free weekend game for Oculus. And you know, it's kind of weird because I thought for sure this already was the free weekend game. I don't know if it was last weekend or the weekend before or what, but I could have sworn Orbis VR al already was the free weekend game, but whatever, it appears to be the free weekend game again, or maybe that other free weekend didn't happen and not sure what the deal is. But the other thing to know about Orbis VR on Oculus is this is part of the Gold Rush sweepstakes. Oculus has been doing this basically every single weekend, and the deal has always been the same. On Saturday, between the hours of 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. Pacific time, and I love how everything is Pacific time. That's where I am. That is the only time that anybody should care about, Pacific time. And I love the fact that all of this stuff seems to be in Pacific time. But you got to get into an Orbis VR game. You just got to load it up and get into a game between 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. Pacific on Saturday, and you'll be entered for a chance to win all kinds of prizes. Now, one of the things you guys might have noticed with a lot of these Gold Rush sweepstakes is there's been a lot of issues. A lot of people have tried to get into Sprint Vector or Brass Tactics or whatever the game was, and a lot of people couldn't get into it and had a lot of problems, but typically what happens is Oculus has our back when it comes to this. And so as long as you fire up the game at some point in the day, you're usually pretty good. But I would try to get in there between 1 and 2 p.m. And if you have a lot of problems, just get into it later in the day. You'll probably get entered in anti anyways. And you know, the crazy thing is I haven't entered any of these sweepstakes. Not that I haven't wanted to, I've just always forgotten it or I've always been busy during those hours and been gone somewhere else and haven't been able to try it. And I really need to get in there because I really need to win one of those kick-ass gaming PCs that would really come in handy, no question about it. Okay, let's go ahead and go into story number four. Story number four, Star Child by Playful Corp is going to get a debut. Well, not really a debut, but another unveiling of it at the Tribeca Film Festival. Now, the Tribeca Film Festival is going on right now as we speak, and it runs all the way until April 29th. So I'm not sure exactly when this is going to happen, probably sometime next week if I had to guess, but Playful Corp is going to be at Tribeca at some point, and they are going to show off a brand new build of Star Child. And I got to tell you guys, I'm hyped when it comes to Star Child. In fact, if we go back a number of months to when that Sony Demo Disc 2 came out and Moss was on there and Star Child was on there and the Persistence was on there. If you're a PlayStation VR player and you haven't tried Demo Disc 2, what the hell are you doing? Go ahead, you can download this off of PSN. You don't even need to buy like the Skyrim bundle or whatever and get it in the box. You can download this online and it's got a lot of great demos for a lot of good games. And I remember way back when we got this demo disc, I tried Moss, I tried the, the build of the persistence that they had, I tried Star Child, and you know, my takeaway was Star Child. I was more excited about Star Child than any of the others. And Moss, of course, has come out since then and it's a great game. It's a wonderful game. I love Moss. I've had a lot of fun with Moss. 
but I'm still really excited for Star Child. I mean, these are the guys that made Lucky's Tale. These guys know what they're doing. They've got some experience in VR. They've done this before. This is a PlayStation VR exclusive. Now, maybe at some point in the future, this game will end up on the Vive and the Rift. So it's something to keep our eyes on, even if you don't have a PSVR, but I'm definitely looking forward to this. So I'm curious, those at Tribeca that might get, a, get their hands on this game, definitely curious to hear your guys' thoughts if anybody happens to go to Tribeca and gets a chance to try this out. Okay, next story we have, and this one is a sad story. I really don't want to have to talk about this. It is really unfortunate. I'll file this in the We Hardly Knew Ye department, and this is basically the Intel Vaunt Smart Glasses. So you guys right, might remember on one of these episodes, I did a long breakdown on the Intel Vaunt Smart Glasses. It was probably like a seven minute segment or whatever it was. And I was talking about it for quite some time. And you know what? I thought it was a really good idea, even though it's not really what we're looking for. The thing that I really liked about the Intel Vaunt smart glasses is the form factor. If they didn't get anything right, they did get that right. The form factor. It looks like a regular pair of glasses. There's no really weird stuff that is going on with it that is an obvious giveaway that you're filming everybody or you're doing something weird. You know, it's like you're wearing regular normal glasses, but you would get these smartphone notifications that would pop up if you wanted them to. And it would only be if you looked in a very specific corner of your vision, would you even see it? And then if you never looked in that corner, it would never even show up. So it was a really good idea, really good design. And basically what I thought was that this is, could be like the first iteration. And if they could continue to work on this, continue to bang away on this, maybe eventually it wouldn't just be red and black or, or just a red color. Eventually it would go to like a full color thing. And eventually it might incorporate all kinds of other stuff as well. So I'm really disappointed in this. I got to believe that manufacturing these things is just incredibly expensive. That's probably why this thing fell apart. Basically, Intel was looking for a partner to to go along with this. They were looking for somebody like Oakley or, or somebody that is already in the world of glasses and frames to maybe hop on this bandwagon with them and create a product based off of this Vaunt prototype but it's not going to happen. They basically are shelving it and it's a complete and utter bomb, if you will. And it's terribly unfortunate because I thought there were some definite possibilities here. I basically just have to think that it must have a pretty outrageous price. And that's why all these other companies are like, yeah, mm, good idea, but no, we're not really interested. And so Intel basically had to shelve that really disappointing. Hopefully we'll see something similar crop up maybe from another company. Okay, next story I want to get into is, well, we're always talking about these free weekends, right? We're always talking about it with the Oculus Rift. Seems like every single weekend there is a free game on Oculus Rift. I think it's a great idea. Already mentioned that Orbis VR is that free game this weekend. And I kind of wondered out loud, why doesn't Steam do this? You know, it seems like it'd be a great idea for Steam to do this. And Steam Valve isn't doing it themselves, but Crow Team is. It is a free Crow Team weekend from a VR standpoint. You can download the Talus Principle, or you can download any one of all the various Serious Sam games. In fact, I am downloading Serious Sam 3 VR BFE or whatever it's called. I'm downloading that game right now as we speak. Can you guys believe it? I've never played any of the Serious Sam games in VR. Never played any one of them. I've been interested in them. They've always been a little bit on the pricey side. Crow Team has never hooked me up with any codes, nor VR Roundtable with any codes. I've never been able to get the game for free. But the good news is, with this free trial weekend, it gives cheap gamers like me an opportunity to get in there and try Serious Sam, uh, some of these Serious Sam VR games and also the Talus Principle. Now I own the Talus Principle and you guys should just buy that damn game, but go ahead, download the trial, play it all weekend long, basically get a good feel for it. And then all of them, all these Crow Team games are on sale. So if you like them, you can go ahead and pick up the full game. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the final story that I have for you for this weekend recap. And this actually was going to be its own video. I was going to do a video just about this story here, but then decided, you know what, why don't I just do a full on weekend recap and, and cover a lot of other stuff as well. So that's what I ended up doing. But basically this story here is Primordian and In Death, two of my favorite games of 2018 so far. They both have received major updates and I've jumped into both games. I've tried them since this update, so I have some stuff to talk about it. But before I get into that, I want to say that I found out about the in death update because of Fuzzy Dragon. Fuzzy Dragon left a comment on one of the recent videos. I think it was the Maxi Pool Masters VR video that I did. I think he left a, a comment on there. In fact, I'll go ahead and read his comment. Just a heads up, Anthony, but beware if you boot up in death again. Some of those new enemies that just got added in the update are legit the most terrifying things I have seen in VR. They may easily be too much for people who can't stand horror. So I heard this quote, you know, from Fuzzy Dragon and I, this comment, and I was like, oh my God, in death has a huge update. Not only that, it has these new enemies that might scare the shit out of people. That is exciting. So I was like super hyped. Definitely wanted to try this out. So I went ahead, loaded up Oculus and, you know, did the update, went through the whole update process. I had to download like three point something gigs or whatever. It went through the entire update, got in there, started playing in death. And I played the game for probably an hour and a half, almost two hours. I didn't see any new enemies. So I don't know if I was doing something wrong or I just didn't get to the area where these new enemies are, or maybe it's like a, a separate section you gotta go to and I didn't, I wasn't paying attention, not sure what happened here, but I did not see any new enemies, but I still had a hell of a lot of fun. I still love In Death. I still love playing the game. It is a straight up gamers game. There's just no two ways about it. And the thing that I love about In Death is Basically, I like playing the game just to see how long I can survive. And then I always feel like, you know what? I can survive another 10 seconds. Let me do that again. Let me see if I can survive a little bit longer. And it's just, you know, one more play, one more play. That's how it always is within death. Most of my game sessions will last like 20 minutes or whatever, and then the game's over. But I keep going back into it because I just want to give it one more chance and that, that's basically the way it is with In Death. But I didn't notice any new enemies, didn't really notice anything new about it, but had a lot of fun regardless. And so I'll keep playing it. So Fuzzy Dragon, let me know, what do I have to do to go see these new enemies? Because I didn't actually see any. Okay, so what about Primordian by Stonepuck Studios? So Primordian, this is a game that I've actually been wanting to talk about recently before it even had this new update. But now that it had another update, it gives me a perfect excuse to go ahead and jump into the game, let it update, let me check it out, and let me see what's going on here. And I went ahead and I decided to start the game over from scratch because this is a pretty major update. And you know what? In this one, I did notice some legitimate changes. The main thing I noticed is there are some new enemy types that are in this game. There's these little like monkey guys that kind of jump around. Oh my God, they will harass the shit out of you. They are very irritating. They attack you in numbers. They jump out of nowhere and you got to slash the hell out of these guys to get them out of your face. They'll kill you pretty easily, even though they're pretty easy to be dispatched themselves, but they have strength in numbers. They're kind of like the sand people in that way. You know, they're easily startled, but they come back in heavy numbers and they walk in a single file line and everything that Obi-Wan said in that now classic movie. But basically, um, Primordian, I, I really like this game. You know, the thing about Primordian that I love so much is it is just, man, when I think of Primordian, it is action jackson you know what i mean like if i were to describe primordian in two words it would be action jackson and the reason why is because you get in there and 
there's just impact, man. It feels like you just jumped into the middle of a sci-fi movie. It's like a Predator, a Predator movie or an Avatar movie. It's like Avatar meets Predator or something like that. The jungle is awesome. The jungle is really cool. In fact, if I had a VR arcade, I, I would say that Primordian is probably a really good game for a VR arcade because Primordian is one of these games where you play it for 15 minutes, you might come out of it thinking it's the best VR game period. Um, you know, it has, it really shows well in a very short, short burst of a play session. You play it longer and you might get kind of tired of the combat and the slow-mo and all of that. It kind of is a little bit overwhelming, uh, you know, the sound and everything, but visually and audio wise, just drop dead gorgeous. And it's amazing to me because I heard somebody told me that there really was only one guy that made Primordian. I don't think he did the music, but one guy that basically did the game and God damn, that guy is absolutely killing it. If one guy made Primordian much love, I would love to interview this guy, talk to this guy because he is freaking doing some amazing things. I really love Primordian and it's a wonderful game. And you know, I had no problem going back through it again from scratch, seeing some of these new enemies. Now the combat has supposedly been revamped and updated. I didn't really notice too much of a difference with it, but um, you know, I didn't have much of a problem with it before. You basically get into these slow motion encounters. Again, it feels like you're inside a movie and it feels like a special effect is happening right there and you're in the movie in the special effect, slow-mo taking place and you are slicing and dicing and you will decapitate these people. Uh, these big gigantic monster creatures, kind of predator looking guys, you'll decapitate them and their huge body just kind of flops to the ground. And it, it's just a weird visceral kind of experience. I know I use visceral quite a bit, but goddamn, Primordian really is visceral. Anybody that plays it, you know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of impact and a lot of power with Primordium. But anyway, guys, that's pretty much gonna go ahead and wrap it up for this weekend recap of the show, VR Game Rankings YouTube channel. And basically, like I said, I don't know when I'm gonna do another one of these. I don't know what the next video is. I do know this, I really would like to bang out at least three videos per week if possible. And of course, you know, I did the Time Carnage video, I did the Maxi Pool Masters VR video, and now here is the weekend recap video. So that's three videos over this week. So, you know, I've done a little bit here, and next week I'll have to see what else I can bang out. But definitely stay tuned to this channel. Stuff is still gonna come. We're not going anywhere. We're going to continue to bang away at this thing. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. So have a wonderful weekend. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already subscribed. Like the video. Tell somebody about the channel. And uh, tell somebody about the website. And I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy. Later.